Hello everyone, quick introduction to our Endless Genome Research software which is now available. If you're not familiar with our software, our software sits at the end of the spectrum of genomic software. After generating sequence data, there are a couple steps that need to occur before you get down to calling variants. But many sequencing companies and services are doing these steps for you. What they don't do is help you out after variants have been called. How do you determine what is phenotypically relevant for that individual? How can you easily compare multiple genomes? And how can you design a point-and-click interface to make this information accessible to researchers of all types? Getting data into our software is very easy with our importer program. You simply tell the software what type of data you have, point it at a location, and hit the Go button. The software will import the variations, annotate them, and create an endless.genome file. Now our endless.genome file is a very compact, efficient, and fast file for storing all of the relevant variation data on a single individual. It contains SNPs and indels, gene impact annotations, structural and copy number variation, call coverage and information on where the genome was uncalled, and lots of different types of metadata. So using this file is fast, very efficient, and is great for long-term storage of this genomic data. Now we want to show you a real example of what you can do with this software. So we're going to take a look at this family trio. Now the mother and daughter of this trio have an interesting low cholesterol phenotype, whereas the father has normal cholesterol levels. So we're going to try to identify the root genetic cause for that phenotype. And in addition to the father, we also have 53 unrelated controls who also have normal cholesterol levels. So here we are at the main Endless Genome Research application window. We don't currently have any genomes loaded, but we can do that very easily. We've already imported the mother, the father, and the daughter's genomes, so we can simply drag and drop those onto the window. Now I also mentioned that we have 53 control genomes. We might want to create a new genome set so that we can search those all together. We'll call it Cholesterol Controls, and we'll select all 53 of those genomes, drag that into the new set, and now we can use that for searching. So let's try to find that variation that might be responsible for the low cholesterol phenotype. Let's open up the Variation Filter tool in a new tab. The Variation Filter tool allows you to search many genomes at once and combine different filters to quickly find variations that you're interested in. So let's add a few filters here. We know we want to search in the mother's genome and in the daughter's genome for a variation they share. And we know we want the variation not to be found in the father's genome and not to be found in the set of 53 control genomes. We might add a gene category because we know this is involved in cholesterol metabolism, so let's select that gene category. The software contains a number of predefined categories, or you can create your own. We might also want to try first looking for a variation that has a non-synonymous protein impact. So we'll add that filter, and once we're done, we can go in and press the Go button. Pressing the Go button will start at searching chromosome by chromosome. The results are listed as they come back. You can see which chromosome it's searching here, and you can see which genome it's searching here. So you can see how fast this is going. It's really been optimized both at the application level and at the file format level. Now I can tell you that this search will take about a minute and a half and we'll find six results in total, but I'm just going to stop it here. We've already found four results. So let's take a look at these. We found three missense variations and one nonsense variation. This nonsense variation is pretty interesting. It's in this gene called PCSK9. If we're unfamiliar with this gene, we can click on the link here to open up a gene page. On the gene page, we've accumulated everything we know about this gene for all the genomes that we have loaded. So here are the mother, the father, and the daughter. And then we have summaries of their protein variations, DNA level variations, call coverage, and any overlapping copy number or structural variations. For each of these sections, there's more details further on down the page. We can read about its functional description, get keywords with definitions, any disease associations with this gene are noted, and we can get a broad overview map of where this is in the genome. 
As we go down further on the page, we start to get into some of those details. We can see the specific amino acid changes that occur. We can see the types of DNA variation, UTR or intron, and have links to go directly to those lists. We get call coverage detail broken down by protein coding bases only, or exons, or the total gene. So we've read all this information. We think this might be a good candidate. So let's go back to the variation filter page. Now we might want to open up a position page and verify that the variation we found is the type of variation we were looking for. We were looking for a variation that was present in the mother and daughter, and indeed we see that they share a SNP at this location. They're a heterozygous for a C2G change. The father shows matching reference on all alleles, and that indicates that we successfully sequenced the father at this position, and he matches reference. Now remember, we also searched 53 control genomes but we didn't have to load those into the program. If we want to view those 53 genomes as well, we can do that very easily. We'll come in here and select that cholesterol control set and say add this genome set to the currently loaded list. Now that quickly we've loaded up those 53 genomes in addition to the three that we are already viewing. Switching back over to the position page, we can see all of those genomes listed and see that they match reference on all alleles just like the father. So none of these genomes share this variation with the mother and the daughter. Further on down the page, there is a broad overview map, but we can click the link here to go get more detail. Now we're centered on that position. We can see that it is in a coding portion of this gene, PCSK9. It's in the third exon here, and we can see that these dark blue exons are coding exons, and there are several more downstream of our position. So this disruption is fairly early on in the gene, and it will likely disrupt the function of the protein. So back on the position page, we get more details here. We see, again, it's a nonsense in this gene, one transcript of this gene. We see it's a tyrosine at amino acid position 142 that has changed to a stop codon. Now if this variation was found in dbSNP, it will be listed here, and you can click on the dbSNP link to open up the site in your external web browser. At this position, we can see that indeed uh, this variation has already been identified as clinically associated, and we can click on the OMIM link here to go directly to that position. Here we are at PCSK9, tyrosine amino acid position 142 to a stop codon, and we read about 3 out of 64 subjects with low plasma levels of LDL cholesterol, this mutation was already identified. So it seems like we have found a, a good candidate for a mutation that is responsible for the low cholesterol phenotype in this mother and in this daughter, and we did it in a matter of minutes. Now we've just shown a few of the tools that we have in the software. We have some other videos on our website if you'd like to take a look at some of the other functionality of the program. We also have a trial version so you can sign up for a free trial, give it a try, and let us know how we can help you with your research.